the lintel. So these are the second floor rooms here. You can see down the line a number of rooms and we'll be there in just a minute. This is um, Andy standing next to the doorway. He's standing at almost the roof level of the ground floor. Here's a uh, second floor with a doorway that has been narrowed up. Boy, that's odd. Huh. Yeah. Now why would why would it be so necessary to narrow a doorway by Or was it that the lintel was having some problems and they were really shoring up the lintel? No, I, I mean, you don't see any evidence of that, right? I just see, I just see that as a way to hold back the form. But, I mean, it doesn't... Because the plaster is still intact on that inner side. You wonder whether they were fixing a problem or just wanted a narrower doorway. Well, or at least that's what I wonder. If I would fix a problem, I would use something that would handle the load much better. Not a thin plank. Yeah. It almost seems like, well, we, this doorway is, we want this doorway four inches narrower for... Mm -hmm. Weird. Storage area back there. Some pictographs there. Look at that little squiggly. Um, I think I'm getting it here. This little squiggly line. Line in red. Comes over with the narrow doorway. The granaries along the back, are we presume, and. Next room block over. See walls in the room we were just looking at. You can see quite a bit expanse of masonry on the bedrock. Oh that's there's that little little niche walled up there. With those big in the side here, the corner effects, like a diagonals, and also I think are interesting are the lintel light effects. Excuse me, the wow. light effects. Wow. Huh. That's very interesting. The Vigo what? On the outside here. We have two stone protrusions coming from the outside. Oh, oh I didn't. South wall. Yeah, I didn't see that from that angle. Excuse That's me. The very top, sure. Yeah. Now those look like they were, you know, anchors for something mm -hmm. as opposed to. And that little corner lintel thing doesn't come through on the other side. Yeah. Doesn't look like there's any evidence of any. Oh, well, it's eroded through here, and you can see the lintel is, is exposed in the wall. I'm sure it was plastered over, but it's, God, that's, there's kind of a separation. The, the, the rocks aren't interlocked at that point, but it looks like they were built up at the same time to that level, and then they're interlocked above to a greater extent. This little opening looks like it was almost originally here for some reason. The way these stones are Butted, see how these two stones, Andy, are butted together to almost form a lintel? And it looks like the rocks on this side almost kind of, but maybe not. I mean, they, maybe those were just rocks in there that came out and that was 
Might just be that three rocks have been removed. The same rock I was talking about, you can see how green it is here. How well it fractures. This is the baseline of the deposit. Then it goes up for about eight feet. block just adjacent to the second what I've been calling the second that we were just at in fact probably part of and you can see a little granary here <laughs> I figured you were the drip but it's I didn't have any idea you were sitting right there and I was walking one foot from you These are kind of interesting rooms you seen all these long tabular pieces? Uh-huh. And when I walked by I saw that one vertical one. You seen the two standing up against one another? Over here? Yes. <coughs> and that granary is right there. You know, this is this is roofed, huh? Now look at this split slab right here. And there's two slabs for potentially lintels. Wow. We're not in Kansas anymore. Really? Where's the hand? Up, above the hand. Oh, there's a star, too. You count six fingers there, Bruce? One. Well, I think that one next to the thumb is just something in the rock that... I think what you're seeing is that extra finger is something in the rock, because you can see that there was spattering there, is my guess. Not that there aren't six-fingered hands in the... I mean, those do... But that one looks like it's been surgically added to me. See how I, you can see the spattering along? You're talking about oh, five yeah, and yeah. then a sixth one here. It's a surgically added six finger. I don't know if I was recording all that before, but here's a hand. Here's a star. Oh, this must be a supernova, right? I mean, did you hear that guy's lecture on the supernova? In the relation to the Hebrew text? No, no. Not this guy, the lecturer at university last year. No. One of these archaeoastronomers. No, it's funny how they did this in masonry rather than just using the back wall. I wonder if there's actually a room around. Oh, yes. I see. It's Norma W's room. Ah, this is interesting over here. Look how big an area, all this fallen fill. But um, see, this was, this room was coming out here, which makes this one room. There's that wall there, this wall there. back at the first ruin 
We're now standing at the east end, getting a very nice shot. Here, I just put the video camera away two minutes ago, and I was so pleased with this that I had to take it out and get one more shot here. But you can see that this is quite a large room block. I would think 30 rooms or so by the time you get the two deep rooms and the two stories, and very large rooms. This is the one that we were in before with very large rooms. And here's the upper end of the canyon. Way out of Pueblo Canyon. This is looking up the canyon above the waterfall. You can see the first ruin right here. Picture rock, I mean the window rock, right up here. The broad expanse of the Cherry Creek drainage, including the area down below, that's the road where we started in the center slope that we came up, and down below, down below this cliff, we can see some of the room blocks that we didn't visit. I mentioned at the beginning. So that pretty much concludes our trek into Pueblo Canyon. There is back up in here, I don't know if I'm hitting the right spot or not, this is Bronco Canyon, and there are cliff dwellings over at the base of that cliff, I don't know if they're going to show or not in this. This is Devil's Chasm Canyon, the three canyons south of Pueblo Canyon. There are cliff dwellings up in here. Pretty neat, huh? You should have seen it ten minutes ago when the sun was much more red and whoa. Neat. We camped right oops, over there and the, you see the cotton plants. stream running down there. Catalog number 2671. Botanical specimens. Cockleburs. Catalog number 40865. Botanical specimens. Catalog number 41389. Botanical specimens. Catalog number 2673, 
squash fragments. Catalog number 2672, corn. Catalog number 40855, corn. Catalog numbers 2602, 2603, 2604, and 2605. Arrow fragments. Catalog numbers 2606, 2607, and 2608, arrow fragments. Catalog number 2648, Cordage. Catalog number 2650, Cordage. Catalog number 2652, Cordage. Catalog numbers 2653, 2654, and 2655, Cordage. Catalog number 428, Bird's Head. Catalog numbers 446 and 447, discs. Catalog number 2443, 
Plume Circle. Catalog number 2457, Bird Body Fragments. Catalog number 2458, Birdhead. Catalog number 2459, Birdhead. Catalog numbers 2460 and 2461, Painted Wood. Catalog number 2462, Fragmented Bird Tail. Catalog numbers 2463 and 2464, Bird Tail. Catalog number 2465, Bird Tail. Catalog number 2466, Bird Tail. Catalog numbers 2467, 2468, 2469, and 2470, Bird Tails.
Catalog number 2471. Bird tail fragment. Catalog number 2472, Bird Tail Fragment. Catalog number 2473, Bird Tail Fragment. Catalog number 2474. Bird wing fragments. Catalog number 2475, Bird Body Fragment. Catalog number 2476, Bird Tail Fragment. Catalog number 2477, Bird Wing Fragment. Catalog number 2478, Painted Wood Fragment. Catalog number 2479, Bird Tail Fragment. Catalog number 2480, Bird Body Fragment. Catalog numbers 2481, 2482, and 2483, Horn Fragment. Catalog numbers 2484, 2485, and 2486, Horn Fragments. Catalog number 2487, Horn Fragments. Catalog numbers 2488, 2489, and 2490, Horn Fragments. Catalog number 2491, Horn. Catalog number 2492, Horn. Catalog number 2493, Horn. Catalog number 2494, Horn. 